I'd always taken the subway home after work. It was the easiest way to navigate the city. Cheap, quick, and reliable. After years of riding the same train every day, I could do it on autopilot. I knew the stations by heart, the regulars who boarded at certain stops, and even the rhythm of the train's movement as it rattled down the tracks. That night was no different. It had been a long day at the office, and I was ready to go home, put my feet up, and forget about work. The station was mostly empty, the usual quiet buzz of late commuters filling the air. I caught the train like I always did, the familiar whoosh of the doors opening and welcoming me into the dimly lit carriage. There were a few other passengers, a man in a suit reading a newspaper, a woman with her headphones in, and an older couple sitting quietly near the doors. It felt normal, comforting even. I found my usual seat by the window and settled in, the hum of the train lulling me into a half-asleep state as it pulled away from the platform. About three stops in, I noticed something odd. The announcements weren't coming through. Normally, the automated voice would call out each station name as we arrived, giving passengers a heads up for their stop. But tonight, it was silent. The train rolled through station after station without a word, the doors opening and closing with no announcement. I pulled out my phone to check the time, but there was no signal. Typical for the subway, I thought. The train continued on, and I leaned back, deciding not to worry about it. Maybe it was a glitch in the system. But as the train passed the station that should have been mine, my stomach twisted. The doors didn't open, and the train didn't slow down. It just kept moving, speeding through the station like it didn't exist. I sat up, suddenly wide awake, and looked around the car. No one else seemed bothered. The man was still reading his newspaper. The woman with the headphones hadn't moved. The older couple sat perfectly still, staring straight ahead. It was as if they hadn't noticed we'd missed a stop. I stood up, gripping the pole beside me as I made my way toward the front of the car. I pressed the button for the emergency intercom, but there was no response. The speaker was silent. I turned back to the passengers. Excuse me, I said, my voice shaking slightly. Does anyone know why the train isn't stopping? The man with the newspaper slowly looked up at me. His face was pale, his eyes dull. He blinked, but said nothing, then went back to reading as if I wasn't there. I turned to the others. The woman with the headphones didn't react at all. The older couple didn't even glance my way. It was like I was invisible. Panic started to creep in. I moved to the next car, hoping to find someone, anyone, who could tell me what was going on. But as I stepped through the doors, I froze. The car was empty. Completely empty. I stood there for a moment, staring at the rows of empty seats, trying to make sense of it. I could have sworn there were people in this car when I boarded. I backed out, returning to the car I had come from, but when I stepped through the doors, something was wrong. The passengers were gone. The man with the newspaper, the woman with the headphones, the older couple, vanished. The seats where they had been sitting were empty now, as if they had never been there at all. The train hummed along, the sound of the wheels on the tracks echoing in the eerie silence. My pulse quickened. I ran to the nearest door and tried to pry it open, but it was locked. I banged on it, yelling for someone, anyone, to help, but the sound was swallowed by the endless hum of the train. I checked my phone again, still no signal. The time hadn't changed. It was stuck at 8.43, the exact moment I had first checked when I boarded. That's when I noticed the lights. They were flickering. Not in the usual way, like a power surge or a bad connection, but in a strange, rhythmic pattern, on and off, on and off, like the train itself was breathing. The air grew colder, the flickering lights casting long, dancing shadows across the empty seats. I backed away, my breath coming in shallow gasps, as I headed toward the back of the train, hoping to find the conductor. As I moved through the cars, one after another, they all looked the same. Empty, 
silent with the same flickering lights. No people, no sound, just endless rumble of the train speeding down the tracks to God knows where. I was about to turn back when I reached the last car, and that's when I saw it. There was someone sitting at the very back, in the far corner. For a moment, relief washed over me. Finally, someone who could explain what was happening. I hurried toward the figure, calling out as I approached, but as I got closer, my steps slowed. Something wasn't right. The figure was hunched over, its back to me, completely still. Its clothes were old, ragged, covered in dirt and grime, as if they hadn't been washed in years. And its head, its head was too low, as though it had no neck, or its spine was bent at an impossible angle. Excuse me, I said, my voice barely a whisper now. Are you, are you okay? The figure didn't move. I stepped closer, reaching out a hand. The air around me grew colder and the flickering lights seemed to pulse in time with my racing heart. Then, slowly, the figure turned. Its face was wrong, twisted, pale and sunken, with wide, empty eyes that seemed to stare through me. Its mouth hung open, unnaturally wide, like it was frozen mid-scream, though no sound came from it. It looked... dead. Decayed. I stumbled back, gasping for breath, and the figure stood. It moved towards me, slow and deliberate, its head still tilted at the sickening angle, its hollow eyes locked on mine. I turned and ran, sprinting through the empty cars, my footsteps echoing in the silence. Behind me, I heard it following. The train was endless, car after car, I ran, but there was no end, no conductor, no other passengers, just that thing, following me, its footsteps growing louder, closer. I reached the front of the train, gasping for air, and slammed my fists against the door to the conductor's compartment. Help, please help me. No response. I turned, my back against the door, just in time to see the figure step through the last car. Its eyes were glowing now, its mouth still hanging open in that horrific, silent scream. It moved faster, closing the distance between us with terrifying speed. There was nowhere left to run. The lights flickered one last time, then went out completely, plunging the train into darkness. And the last thing I heard before everything went silent was the sound of the doors opening. I woke up in the hospital. They told me they found me unconscious on the platform, just outside the train. I had passed out, they said. Exhaustion, maybe stress. I tried to tell them about the train, about the figure, but they just shook their heads. There was no train, they said. You were alone when we found you. I know that's not true. And now, every night, I dream of that train, the flickering lights, the empty cars, and that figure, always at the back, always waiting. I know it's still out there, and someday it'll come for me again.